Hey gang, East Coast Lumberjack here, Rod Cumberland. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing here. Um, so now we're going to the stage two for our double bitter. That's the one we just, it's the one we just polished up out in the, out in the shop. So there it is. It's a, it's a pretty little, pretty little axe. And this one here, can't remember where that came from, but it was in real rough shape when I found it. And we've uh, cleaned it up so much you can see how thin the sidewalls are on it. So it's uh, it's your typical East Coast double bitter, um, double bitted axe. It's been used a lot. It's uh, there's only about an inch and a half, two inches on each side of the eye for steel left in it. But it's a neat rig, and it uh, shined up nice. It'll sharpen up nice, and it'll it'll work well for an axe. So what I did. I made this puppy here. So this is a Canadian white ash. It is 30 and a half inches long. So typically, typically a cruiser handle on the East Coast is right around 28 inches. But I've got uh, I've got this one at 30. I don't know what the guy's going to use it for. Uh, it may just be a wall hanger for all I know. So I'm going to show you how to finish up a handle here, white ash. I'm going to show you a double bitter because they're, they're a little bit different. They're a little different than most handles. Um, you want them symmetrical on from side to side. So usually what I do first, if I look at the grain, the grain is pretty pretty sweet. It's actually straight grain. There's only one run out here, one uh, grain here, and then there's nothing run out at all until right here. The last little bit and then of course that's because of the sweep for the uh, for the palm swell so I just take my spoke shave and I go run the full length of the handle right down to where those other grains are going to catch me up and I keep it nice right on the flat so I get so it's nice and flat all the way down then I'm gonna round this side and round this side just take off that little edge so if you're keeping your handle mostly flat here and I'm gonna go right over and take off that sharp edge on the outside and then just slowly feather it back over with a spoke shape if I see a line I'm just gonna remove it that's your overhead light comes in handy down. and the same thing over here I'm gonna take off that outside sharp edge right there and I'm just going to keep rolling that into the center. So now it's just a gradual, it's, it's mostly flat, which is a gradual roll on each end. So that's as, that's as quick as it takes on a, on a double bitter if you do it nice and uniform on your bandsaw. So now what we got to do is smooth this end out into what we just did, roll it in there nice and smooth. And now we're going to switch over to the Stanley shear form. Just going to round out that palm swell. So again, we're doing the same. What we're doing, we're taking a little bit out of the hollow, and we're taking off the edges to the uh, octagonal finish on the bandsaw. The same thing, shaping it right into the handle. So then we do this edge here. Again, the whole pinch just to round it over. And round this one the same way. There. And now I put on. Once I get that done, I put on my signature bevel on, on the very end. I'll show you this in just a second. There. So, what we've done. This is the, you can see there, the octagonal finish on the side I haven't done yet. Now this side here, you can see it's rolled over pretty sweet the whole way around. Down here, I just used a shear form to roll these edges over. 
And then of course I put that bevel right along the outside edge. There's our grain. Typical East Coast Lumberjack handle, grain always runs straight up and down the eye. That's how we want it. So we're half done already. You can see it's pretty quick, so I'm hopefully going to be able to show you the whole thing here. Finishing the handle and hanging the, uh, the head. So same thing. Full length of the handle. Nice and flat. Once you've got it nice and smooth, then just roll those outside hedges a little. And then take off that real sharp edge. And then feather it right over into your, into your outside edge. Or your, sorry, into your middle. Feather it into the middle, like this. You gotta do it a little bit. There, we're pretty close. So same thing down here. Now the, the grain is going a little different down on this end. So I can keep pulling towards myself. Now, something, something I want to tell you, a little trick from the East Coast Lumberjack. If you have a grain partway down your handle, like I do here, if I can, we can see it here with the light. Okay, you know the light's too dark. Oh, yeah, you see it right there if I put a shadow on it. See that grain right here? Okay. So what happens is, there's a, there's a growth ring there, and then of course it ends, and another one comes underneath it. Typically speaking, when you're finishing a handle, that growth ring that's showing up, you'll get a bump. Right where that ends, you'll get a bump down to the next grain. Okay, and when I run my fingers over that, I can feel that little bump. Okay, so if you have grain sticking out like that, there's another one right here. You've got to take your spoke shape back, and you've got to feather it into the grain underneath. Okay, a little trick from the East Coast Lumberjack, because what will happen when you're doing this, if you have grain sticking out part way down your handle, you'll get that little bump. So I can feel that with my fingers. So all I'm going to do is go on the top grain, nice and light, and feather it into the bottom one. Okay, that's a little bit better, but I need, I need more. There, much better. From here, same thing. There we go, much better. So that's a good trick from the East Coast Lumberjack because that usually comes up, you'll get that little bump where two grains are coming together. Started out a pretty cold day here on the East Coast, but she ended up pretty nice when the sun came out. Always check my bottom to make sure it's uniform around. And it's looking pretty good on this one. There we go. So switch over to the old Nicholson. And I'm just going to smooth out all those lines that we put in with both tools. off my bevel out here. There we go. Now 
I'll just keep working my way up the handle, smoothing any of the lines or bumps out. As we go along, usually your eye can see them. Your finger will tell you that's a yeah, beautiful smooth handle. Now, I know hickory is tough as snot, I know that, but there's something to be said for beautiful white ash. It's, uh, it finishes smooth, it looks really pretty, it stays nice and white. So, uh, I can never get enough of finishing a nice white ash handle. There's that half done. One more and then we're going to hang. This one here, same thing. Take out all the little lines. Darcy, this is yours. That double bitter you wanted. I'm going to get her to you this week. Oh yeah, I'll be in town all this week. So I've usually been doing a lot of handles and uh, trees the last few weeks, but this week I'm taking a scaling course from uh, Natural Resources. So I'm, I'll be in at the uh, complex all week. Sit in a classroom. Learn how to scale wood. That's all they are, little pieces of rubber on that aluminum. And they get little magnets in it, so they sit right there. And you can put your handle in it without denting your handle. So, let's take a look here. Okay, not a lot. It's fat in the middle, but it rounds out. You can see it rounds out really well on the end. So, we're just going to jump right in and round that end out. It's a little bit smaller than what I have here. Do that side. Round up this one. It's a little bit off the middle, not a lot, because I know most uh, most of what has to come off is on the ends. one side pretty much uniform and you look if you look right on the end here I'll show you if you look right here you can see that you're fairly uniform across there okay so I'm going to flip it over do the same thing on this side taking off this bump and this bump and round it like the bottom and at least get the head started so the Ash works pretty fast, which is nice. Take it right down up there. Same thing on this side. Now, 
I've done this once or twice, which is why I'm going quite quick. But if you don't have the experience, take your time and make sure you're making one side the same as the other. Otherwise, your head's going to sit a little bit one way or the other. Okay. Now, let's try it. Still a little too wide. So I'm just going to snug up. I'm just going to come right straight down the outside so that it'll fit. Okay, oh, almost there. Almost. Flop it over, do the same thing on the other side. Now, another trick, <laughs> another trick from the East Coast Lumberjack. On a double bitter, you can afford to come in a little bit more narrow than what your eye is on your, on your axe head because your wedge comes a whole way down there, the full length of that eye, and it will plug whatever gap you have on each end. So you don't have to be as concerned about being exact on a double bitter because your wedge takes up a lot of that slop. So, okay, there, we're on. Okay, which is good, so we're on. I'll pull that off, and now I know it's dragging here, dragging there, It'll be dragging on the other side. He's dragging right here on this end, right in the middle, and then right out here. Now, there's a couple of deep gouges. So, if there's a couple deep gouges, that means that when I'm trying to put this on, you can see there's a, there's a little bit of rough spot here on the inside of the eye. So I have a chainsaw file. I'm just going to go around the inside of that eye with a file and take those little burrs or sharp edges off and just round them over on the outside. Okay, so there's a fairly significant one here. This one right here. Right there, you can see it's, it's gouged out right there. But that piece right here is bowed in and after you go in there, it's flat. So, so a, piece has bur as a, a piece of metal has turned over. We've polished it around. Now we've got to gouge that back out again so that there's no bump there. So I'm just going to file that off so it's smooth. So it goes smoothly into the eyes. Okay, sometimes that happens when you're hanging an axe. You'll get some of these deep gouges, which tells you that your eye opening it isn't as pure and smooth as you need it. So that there should help right there. Yeah, so it slides on quite nice right now. Okay, whoop, there's a bunch. It's weird. Okay. Nope, we're good. Thought there was something else on in the eye. Right there. So now we're just gonna do our same thing we always do. Put the head on, tap it. On a bit more. Wow. It's a very uneven eye. <laughs> but which is fine. You can see there's a bump here too on the top. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll likely file that off as well. But there's a lot of gap in here now. So my wedge. My wedge is going to be pretty critical to filling that up, and I'll show you when we're as we get closer there. Sometimes, if you can't get a good purchase, I just put my axe head on the inside of the 
vise like that. And then you can see really clearly here where it's dragging on this side and on this side. So what I'm going to do before I take my round file and I showed you this right here. Okay, we can see that bump right there. I'm going to take my round file and I'm going to file that off because it's actually just metal that's curled over on that opening. I'm going to make a uniform eye the whole way around there on the top. So the other thing, there's a couple of, uh, I don't know if I can show it to you or not. There's a couple of pieces here. I can barely, yeah, okay. See those, and, and those are big chunks, big chunks of rust. And they're actually holding up, they, they're taking up room, they're taking up space. So now you can see I've, I've smoothed that one out, okay. Should have it a little bit more than that. Okay. The other side over here has got the same issue. I'm just going to use that round file and smooth that out a bit. My old buddy Bill Hooper just got home from Florida. He, he's, he's a big time axe collector. New axe junkies, you haven't seen anything yet until you've seen his collection. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of axes. There, so now look at this one. See that side's nice and uniform across there now? This one here still is that little bump right there. I'm going to try to take that out too. And that little bump, that little bump right there, is that where that little ball of rust is underneath. So I'm going to try to take them both out. Okay, the bump come off, that's good. The bump of rust is gone. There. Much better. So that bump of rust and everything came right off. See now that's almost a perfectly uniform eye. Still got a little bit of a bump there. Put a lot of steel right there, actually. That's why it's not coming off as fast. There. So we're going to go back and finish. We're gouging pretty good here on this end. So I'm going to take that out. And then, of course, we're going to take our Nicholson and smooth into the handle. So from the eye into the handle, you have to do this at some point when you're hanging, because once the head sits on there, you can't get back in here this close. So I like doing it before I'm almost done. So now you're just, you're just making a gradual transition from where your eye slides on to where the handle takes over. All right, now some guys like a big pronounced shoulder there, but of course I've told you, if you have any kind of a score mark across there at all, it creates a weak point in your handle. Okay, there's that, we need to do the same thing. Now smooth out into your handle. So we have a nice smooth transition. There we go. Oh, beauty. So 
we're half we're halfway on right now. So we're she poke got her lick. Yeah, fetched up pretty good. There we go. So we're almost there. We've got about a between a quarter and well three eighths of an inch left. So let's pop this out one more time. This should do it this time. thing I want to do I'm gonna make a little mark pick my black marker I'm gonna make a little mark on my axe and on my handle like this a little mark on the axe mark on the handle hello so I know which side to put it on on. Okay, so I better put that black mark down a little bit. Someone just came in upstairs. Huh? Emily. Oh, how you doing, Em? Daughter Emily. Okay, so. Good news is we're touching almost the whole way around. Both sides. Ah, uh, there we go. So the good news about that is it's, it's going to be snug in the eye the whole way around, which is what you want. You want it to your uh, wedge to fill that so that you're touching almost the whole way around the eye. So we're just about there. Same thing, we'll go back, smooth this all over nice, because this time it'll probably sit there. <clears throat> so I will do it with a rasp, and then I'll also take some sandpaper and sand it right there, because you can't get your sandpaper in there once your head's on. Same thing on the other side. It's dragging, taking it off. Now we're gonna go around, same thing, finish it up. And I think what I'm gonna do with this one, I think I'm gonna burn it for that and take your sandpaper and go the whole way up around where you know the axe head is going to end beautiful now our dots on the other side so we're going to slide this on here we've got about an inch to go okay perfectly in line with the handle so your the other thing you want to do is look down your bit and make sure your bit is straight in line with this tip down here this knob okay so you want to look right down it like line it up right there okay it wants to sit right in the middle of your handle like that if it's off to one side or the other you gotta shave off wood so it brings it around where it's supposed to be Now, there we go. So if we look, because again, this is an old ax and it sat around and rusted. So in order to get it on there, we took a little bit more off of here and a little bit more off of here. It's sitting nice and straight now, but you can see there's lots of gaps here in the eye. So what we need is a nice big fat wedge to take up all that slack. We just happen to have what the doctor ordered right here. So we're going to pound that in there nice and solid so it takes up all the gap. Okay, so it's gone in that far. So two-thirds of the way, 
and you can tell it's taken up a lot of that gap now so pound that in good just as far as you can get it in there keep keep working from one end of the wedge to the other There we go. So it's mushroomed a bit. So now I'm going to snip that off in the bandsaw. See that? He's built up the whole way around. Now there's a little hole right here. Just because of the way that axe is, is made, that eye up there, I will likely take a little piece of wedge like this here, and I will tap that in there. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make it fit. There's my Zacto knife right there. So it's pretty fat on this end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to make it a wedge again, slice it down there nice and gradual. There. Okay, so then I'll start it in here. So it fills that hole. And it, it didn't it didn't go in very far, okay? And it, it's busted off there. So we know that's just a gap at the top of that eye. And then now I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and go around the outside of this. So I'm basically just going to smooth out. You can do it with a with the rasp. Or you can do it with an. I like doing it with a knife. Gives it a a handmade look okay so I do something like that around the the top of it it just gives it I think it gives it a nice looking finish and you don't scrape yourself on that edge so I go right around it and stand so you guys can see what's going on here one here same thing on this end bring it right into the bring it right into the end of that wedge there we go then just bring it around this corner might go back might be easier to get it going back this way which it is There. Okay, so now that's how the the eyes in there. You see, it's nice and full the whole way around there. Okay. Hung a little bit proud. There's a little bit. So the other thing I do, the other thing I do, is you look right here. You can see there's a little bit of curl right here. Okay, you see that? Use your exacto knife and cut that off right like that. Okay, you just have to go around and go cut into the metal. Don't cut into the wood. Okay, so you're gonna lay your you're gonna lay your blade like this and let it go into the eye. So when I flip it over, it's gonna go like this. Okay, takes that off. So there. There we go. 30 inch and change. Double bitter. I'll sand that, burn it, maybe I'll show you how to sand and burn on the next video. But anyways, that one there is ready to be finished.
you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to subscribe. Got a lot of good tips here today from the old East Coast Lumberjack. Uh, you subscribe next time something comes up, you'll get her right in your inbox. Thanks, gang. Talk to you later.